Aside, you cannot forget Mother's Day is right around the corner. Nothing says love like making your mother a homemade dish in the kitchen. We're learning how to do that with our friend Janine Washley from Cloverfields Farm and Kitchen this morning. Janine, good morning. Good morning. All right, so what are well, we making here? <clears throat> these are no fail yeast rolls. So mm -hmm. um, this is what we're going this is what we're gonna make. And they're no fail because not only do they have yeast in them, but mm -hmm. they they're backed up with baking powder and baking soda. So okay. they're gonna rise for you. All right. Plus the beauty of it is you make a big ball of yeast or mm -hmm. a, of dough like this and uh -huh. you can keep this in the refrigerator for five days and okay. so you literally can make rolls all week long and so a lot this is actually an old recipe this is a mm -hmm. recipe that you know probably moms and grandmas made you know when they were young mm -hmm. and it's important to get your parents recipes mm -hmm. and just keep on those traditions but if you don't have a baking tradition you can start one and wouldn't mom love a big pan of rolls where this you got Sunday. That right. Ooh, so, I love homemade rolls. Oh, absolutely. I, I have to say, um, I really like working with yeast dough, mm -hmm. A, because um, I can kind of stretch it out over the day. You know, it doesn't have to be done quickly like with biscuit mm -hmm. dough. And um, I typically always get a good result, and it's a very creative result. We have red velvet cinnamon rolls over here oh, that and then good. Um, this is my dual purpose dough I've made mm -hmm. garlic knots with it but it's a really good pizza dough as well mm -hmm. and then these are the no-fail um, dinner rolls talk to me about the ingredients it goes into okay. our dough okay well we talked about soft wheat flour mm -hmm. and with this you want to use bread flour it's okay. a stronger flour it's going to create stretch whereas we don't want that stretch and that you know that tightness in mm -hmm. our biscuit dough this is a sticky dough it's going to stick to my fingers just like this uh -huh. you can see how it's sticking to my fingers and this this is a proper dough. It's tacky. It feels damp, mm -hmm. but it's not sticking to my fingers. So this is a okay. properly made dough. And I've taken my bench scraper. This is just a, um, you can buy these at Williams-Sonoma, get them online. Mm -hmm. And they make cutting the dough just so much easier. So if mm -hmm. you wanted to play with a little bit of dough, feel free to. Okay. Another um, trick is don't put too much flour on because you uh -oh. actually, you if, if it starts sticking to your hands, uh -huh. you actually want to flour your hands versus okay. the dough because okay. there you go and um and what are so, we doing it, folding so the dough here folding actually creates layers but mm -hmm. this is the way you need you use your palms okay. and you get in there like this okay Oops. jenny See, what's I'll the goal here what's our end goal our end goal is to take it from a shaggy mass of dough uh -huh. to a beautiful mass that is as smooth and dare i say as a baby skin right and so you really want to get in there and you push it away from you mm -hmm. and then you grab it like this and you pull it back so mm -hmm. I've done it in slow motion so you want to do it like this and this is my technique I go from side to side mm -hmm. because it actually does build up your forearms and it builds yeah. up your biceps so if mm -hmm. you make bread on a regular basis ladies you will get rid of that arm jiggle get, that get none of us like in. And you get a great workout, and it increases flexibility and dexterity in your hands. How long does it now, typically you, take, Janine, to get to where we need to go? It, okay, so once you get it smooth like this, mm -hmm. we form a ball, okay. put it back in the bowl, right. and let it rise for an hour and a half because it has two rises. Okay. Then we take it out, and it has doubled in size, and we pinch off about an ice cream, I always think of an ice cream scoop, About that's about a two inch ball of dough. Right. And you can put it into the pan oh. like this, but it'll look a little bit messy when it rises. So the reason mm -hmm. that these all look uniform and pretty is here's the trick. We're gonna mm -hmm. pinch it. Okay. And just like you're closing up um, something inside of a napkin. Okay. And then you take what you've pinched up mm -hmm. and you twist it and that goes okay. on the bottom and you have a perfect ball of dough. And when yeah. it rises, and then when you bake it, you get an absolutely picture-perfect pan of yeast rolls. All right, oh, Janine. You did good. That's good. Not bad. That passes. Not bad for starters. All right, for more information on Janine Washley, and if you would like her recipes, you can find information on our website, WDRB.com. She is with Cloverfields Farm and Kitchen. You can find her email, send her an email, and then she would love to share her recipes with you. Janine, always good to see you. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. I've enjoyed showing you these recipes, and I encourage you to bake for Mother's Day. All right. I will give it a shot.